Hey guys, Lucas from iExplore here. Today I'm uh, exploring Ginza a little bit, doing some street photography, and I wanna share with you seven settings that I think are important or like must have for the Z62 when doing street photography, okay? So let's jump right into it. I explore. All right, so the first and most important setting for street photography with the Z62 is back button focus. It's actually the most important setting on SLRs, like my D4, everything as well. What it is, is that when I push this button up here, I'm not focusing. Only the button on the back here actually makes the camera focus the photo. And so the benefit of that is that I can separate these two actions very easily. So I push here, I'm only shooting, and I focus back here. It means I can focus on something. And then once I feel like, okay, I have the right focus distance, I can just shoot as many photos as I want. I don't have to hold anything, I can let go. I can even reframe a little bit, still knowing that the focus is where, you know, at the distance that I left it. This really helps with timing when moments come out, of, you know, like a subject comes out of nowhere and you wanna be ready to shoot without having to have to waste time focusing yet again, okay? So the way you access this is you go to the menu and go to the custom setting menu, the autofocus section, and then change setting A6 called AF activation to AF on only. And that will make it so it's only on this AF on button over here and not on the shutter release. Okay? So that's the first tip or most important setting for street photography is E6. Now for setting number two, so we talked about back button focus, but now we're gonna talk about actually what autofocus mode is best. In my opinion, I always use AFC with auto area AF and most of the time with subject tracking. So when you go to the I menu and you check change your um, you know your mode to AFC, that's easy. You just you know make sure it's not on AFS, it's on AFC. And then in the AF area mode, you got to choose auto area AF. And then you have you have auto area AF regular for people and for animals. I usually keep it on people, but regular works fine. I don't always shoot people's faces, so it doesn't matter. And then once you're in that mode, when you press OK on the back of the camera you will get this thing called subject tracking. So you get this little tracker that you can use to track. The thing is, pressing OK every time is a little bit tedious, so I've customized it that these FN buttons on the front here get me to the same place. So you can do that in the custom setting menu, okay? So to do that, you go to um, the custom setting menu, go to section F called controls, and then custom controls, setting F2, and then you have function one and function two and you can choose subject tracking. And I actually put it on both because there's nothing else I really need there. And I like the fact that I could just push whichever one. Plus, from the vertical grip, I can just reach the FN2 button, but the FN1 button is kind of hard to reach. So I just kind of have it on both. Maybe I won't do that forever. That's kind of dumb and redundant, but there's no other setting I really need to have there. So I just put it on both, okay? So that's key setting number two or tip number two, street photography with the Z60. Setting number three is about metering. So those of you who watch this channel a lot probably know I've been complaining recently about metering a lot. And one of you, an individual named Martin, thank you so much, gave me a great tip. So this is actually new to me. I've only been shooting like this for a couple of days, but it's really, really cool. So normally I use matrix metering. I've done so on my D4 for years and I've been shooting that way on the Z6 for a long time. But I don't like how matrix metering works with the aforementioned subject tracking mode because it kind of messes with the metering. I have other videos about that, so don't worry about the details there. But the tip that I got, and I'm passing it on to you now, is to use the center-weighted metering. And then in the custom setup menu, so I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna go to section B, metering and exposure. And option B3, you can make the center-weighted area average. And I checked the manual, I, can't f I couldn't figure out what it actually means, but it seems to me like when you're on center-weighted average, that it, it's basically using the entire frame. And it uses that meter, it's kind of like matrix, right? I couldn't really see a big difference between matrix and average when I checked. The key thing is when you use subject tracking, it ignores the tracking point for your metering, which is exactly what I want and I recommend it for you. That way, focusing and metering are completely separate actions, which is how it should be, in my opinion. It only makes sense to combine them with simple photos 
like, I don't mean it in a negative way, but like, a, for example, a portrait where you're focusing on someone's face and you want to meter on their face, sure. But when I'm doing street photography, sometimes I'm focusing on some random pole because I know that my subject's going to pass next to it and be in the focal plane and then I can shoot. But I don't actually want to meter for that random object that I choose for my focus distance. So for street photography, I highly recommend center weighted metering with the average setting in the B3 submenu. Is it B3? Yeah, B3. Okay, important tip. Boop, boop. All right guys, so on to tip number four. Tip number four is about the auto ISO sensitivity settings. Okay, so when you go in the back of the, you know, the back menu, the main menu, to the photo shooting menu, and then an option called ISO sensitivity settings, in here, you can choose your, of course you can turn auto ISO on and off, but the key thing is you can choose a maximum ISO and a minimum shutter speed. Now, typically in the daytime, I like to shoot on AV because it allows me to think less about my settings and more about what really matters in photography, composition and the story I'm trying to tell. So I typically set it to a maximum of 6400 ISO and a minimum shutter speed of 1 over 250. Now in the daytime that's excellent because generally I want to have speed and but I don't want my ISO to really ever go over 6400. It can but you know that's just the limit that I've set for myself in terms of where I get an acceptable amount of noise. Okay. However on my uh, D4, I would typically switch to manual at, you know, when I wanted a slower shutter than 250 because I had this convenient mode button. On this camera, I have to use this dial. So basically, once I switch to M, I don't want to keep switching back and forth. So my kind of style these days is in the daytime, I use A, aperture mode, plus auto ISO. But at night, I just use M plus auto ISO. Meaning that at night, I know I'm going to be shooting at 250 and below for the most part while in the daytime I'm shooting at 250 and above for the most part, okay? Um, it's probably not really the right video to go into extreme depth on why I prefer those two modes. I do have another video on the channel called, you know, best settings for street photography or something like that. There's a card somewhere on the screen, click it and I'll, it'll go into much more detail about why I like those two settings, okay? That's tip number four. All right, guys, and so the last three tips, I'm going to go through a little more quickly because they're a little bit just kind of technical things. They're not, they're not really going to affect how you shoot. They're just going to either make your life easier or harder, well, depending on your shooting style. But there are things that I do. So the first one is um, I always shoot on RAW, which means I don't have to worry about the white balance because I can just change it later. So that means I just keep my white balance on auto all the time. That's probably not ideal, but I find it just gives me one less thing to worry about. And when you're doing street photography, there's so much happening, so many things to pay attention to. The last thing I want to worry about is like the white balance. Uh, along those lines, also, Nikon has the picture style, which you can change. I just keep mine on neutral, not standard. The reason I like neutral is it's closer to the raw. It affects the histogram that appears on the back. That histogram is based off of the picture style that you choose. So I want it to look as close to what I think the raw will look like. Therefore, I choose neutral. There is also a flat option, but it's just like a little bit too flat for my taste. So anyway, I shoot on raw, auto ISO, and the neutral picture style. So for tip number, uh, what are we up to? Six, the kind of display switching modes. So when you push this button on the side of the viewfinder up here, it changes the mode of kind of how the viewfinder, the EVF, and the actual screen work together. So you could have like automatic switching where when you hold the camera away from you, the screen is on, and when you put it to your eye, it, the viewfinder is on. Or you could have always the screen or always the viewfinder only. Or you can have like what's called viewfinder priority, which means nothing is on, but when you bring it up to your eye, you get the viewfinder, right? I find two of those to be completely useless for what I do, which is the only EVF, only screen setting. I just, so I, I don't want to ever see those. I want this button to basically act like live view on my old SLR, where normally when I look through the EVF, you know, the EVF turns on, but if I push this button one time, the back screen turns on and I can use it kind of like live view on my SLR previously. The thing is, I want to get rid of those other two settings, so you have to go into the setup menu scroll down to limit monitor mode selection and then you can remove two of these. So I only have automatic display switch and prioritize viewfinder enabled in here. Viewfinder only and monitor only I've removed. 
which basically makes this a toggle between only those two options. Okay, small little thing, but it really enhances my kind of smoothness of shooting. And finally, last tip, very small, but it's just something that makes it easy for me. If you go to the um, photo shooting menu and scroll through there, there are two options that I keep on. One is diffraction compensation. That one's not that important, but I keep it on. And more important, auto distortion control. This means that the camera will adjust for distortion as you're shooting. Now, typically when you correct for distortion in post, it crops out some of the image. So I like to have that cropping done live and see it in the viewfinder because it does affect my framing a little bit. Because then if I do it in post only, if I frame it a particular way and then later apply the distortion, I realize, oh no, some part of my image is actually getting out of frame. Especially with this 24 to 70 um, Z lens, it's quite heavy on the distortion actually. Easily fixable distortion, but again, I want to see that distortion get fixed in the viewfinder so that I know what my frame is going to look like. I don't remove distortion for every single photo, but I just want to be able to see it live because it aids in my framing. All right, guys, so there you have it. Seven tips or seven useful settings for street photography with the Nikon Z6 II. Now, I try to organize them kind of in, or in order of priority or like importance for me. Those early ones about back button focus and the focus mode are much more important than those last few about like shooting in RAW versus you know, the diffraction, compensation, whatever. But the point of all of these settings is to strike a balance between automation and manual control so that you have as much control of the camera as possible without forcing you to focus too much on it. I don't like to shoot in full manual or tinker too much with, with metering and stuff because I don't want to focus on my camera. I want to focus on the world around me. So I want it to be fairly automatic. But of course, if it's too automated, it starts to do stuff that I don't want it to do. And that can be annoying as well. All right, so try to strike a balance between those two different elements and also in general, my philosophy is that a camera should sort of just get out of your way. It shouldn't feel like you're using the camera. It should feel like you're looking at the world with your eye. So all those other little things about like, you know, the distortion control and whatnot were there for kind of that purpose, right? To make the camera more of an extension of your eye than something that gets between your eye and the world. All right. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you uh, got some ideas maybe to how to enhance your shooting. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them below. And remember always, challenge your eye. Oh, hey guys, you're still here. Wow, you must be a huge fan of iExplore to watch all the way to the end of the video. We really, really appreciate that. That's a huge help because it makes our videos more popular because the YouTube algorithm cares about these kinds of things. But since I have your attention still, I hope you know that we do have a Patreon and also YouTube channel memberships. And if you sign up with either of those, you could get access to our Tokyo Photo Spot map. Um, also, if you're interested in any of the gear that I use in the videos or also some of the gear that we use to shoot the videos, all of the referral links for that stuff is in the description below. And if you click on those, that also helps us out immensely. Finally, we do sell some merch. We have um, I Explore branded t-shirts and also on my own personal homepage, I sell prints. So if that interests you, again, links in the description below. But just the fact that you guys watched all the way to the end, we really appreciate it. So thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next video.